What is going on, Bass and Buds? Welcome to Retro Bass. And we are on the road this morning, heading up from Austin, Texas, up to Abilene. I'm doing a little bit of a road trip here for Texas provisions, dropping off some gear along the way. But you guys know me, I don't go too far without a rod and reel in hand. So I've got a few uh, different spots picked out on the way up. I've got some sort of geese duck monster thing just going nuts over there. Um, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> anyway, I've got a few different spots picked out. I actually saw like a nice little one pounder uh, over there. So we're gonna hit a few different spots as we're heading up to Abilene. Hopefully find a bass or two. It's not like super ideal conditions. It is uh, late January, bluebird skies. We've had some weird fronts kind of coming through. But we'll see if we can fish it old school for you guys. Retro bassin', kicking some assin', wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about bill dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin'. All right, so we are uh, had to make a quick stop here in Wimberley, Texas at a new joint that just started carrying the Texas Provisions gear, the Old Mill Store. All right, here we are. By the way, you guys check out the new Retro Bass and line of Texas Provisions hats. All right, so we got some new ones to put in here. New design here. Done deal. All right, it's time to continue our retro road trip heading up north. I'll see you guys at the next stop. Okay, I lied. There's actually a little creek called Cypress Creek, which runs right through Wimberley. And we are gonna go check that out real quick before we get on the road road. I've never done super well here fishing for bass. There's definitely bass in here, but it's really shallow, really clear. So we'll see how we do. Uh, so by the way, for this trip, I do have a couple of old school rods and reels rigged up. Um, I've just got one reel with me. I'm bringing down to the creek. I've got old school six inch Tom Man's jelly worm in one of my favorite old school colors rigged up. So uh, we'll see if we can find a fish or two down by the creek. I feel like I need like kayak to properly fish this creek. It actually looks like it's got some really cool water. The water does not look as pretty um, this trip as some other trips I've been. And I actually haven't seen any bass. Uh, in the past, I've seen some bass swimming around here, nothing huge. All I've seen today are like four sunfish, so. So one of the cool things about working with Texas Provisions is that it affords me the opportunity to travel to some pretty cool locations. After this trip to Wimberley, we are going to head north um, west, I think. We're heading up to Abilene, Texas. I've got a few general areas that I want to try to hit. I've passed some really good water in uh, this town called Burnett, and some also some areas that I want to fish in um, Brownwood, Texas as well, which is different than Brownsville. But if I could get like one fish to start the trip, that would really set the tone well, huh? Probably should have picked a better spot. So we're in the town of Burnett at a little body of water called Sulphur Springs. So I have driven by this body of water a number of times. I've never actually fished it. 
but it looks pretty good. Check it out. So this is a little river that I think runs through the town. It's, it looks pretty man-made, to be honest with you. It's, it's a lot of concrete. Um, the water looks a little bit funky, and at times it smells just a tad sulfury, which is kind of funny. Um, but this is one of the stops that uh, I was kind of excited to, to stop here. I've driven by this a number of times. I've never actually taken the time to slow down and fish it. I've got a couple of baits tied on. I've got some spinner baits. I'm gonna to try to fish fast, see if I can get something to bite. If not, I might slow it down and throw a little jelly worm. Okay, so this is sort of an interesting spot. One of the observations I've had is that it seems like there's some fish actually camped out, probably starting to uh, bed or thinking about bedding up a little bit. So I spotted a nice uh, two pounder just over yonder. Oh, got one. Oh, man. Oh, that's a nice fish, too. Oh, that is a nice fish. Oh, man. Woo! Oh, come on, buddy. Woo! <laughs> Jelly worm action, son. Oh, jeez. Oh, he's taking drag. All right, buddy. All right, buddy. He's <laughs> trying to lose this guy. Oh. I'm going to go land him down there. I'll see you guys in a second. Well, there we go, son. Uh, that is a nice little, <laughs> Woof, what is that, like a two pounder there? Uh, awesome fish on an old school man's jelly worm. Posted a recent video and I got some worms that were in a June bug and it got me thinking about some of the old colors that I love to fish with. Motor oil is one of them. And I remember there was a time when Jimmy Houston fished with nothing but an old school motor oil worm. So, wow, check out that guy. That is an awesome, super pretty fish. Man, awesome, awesome fish. Look at the lines of that guy. Wow, that is a super pretty, healthy fish. Let's let her go. Oh, I'm shaking a little bit. I'm gonna have to retie here. Holy cow. So I am glad I stayed here. I came up on this spot. This is, I think we're in Burnett, Texas, to be honest with you. I'm halfway between Abilene and Austin, or, or Austin and Abilene, but either way. Heading up there, and I saw this spot on my GPS. It looked kind of fishy. I got down here, it's basically just a community uh, pond. I guess it's a river that's running through the town, but uh, I was walking up and down the banks and I saw, again, some two pounders like that guy just kind of up hanging really tight to the bulkhead. I've been throwing a spinnerbait without a ton of luck, so I decided to go back to the car and dig up this, an old school six inch jelly worm in motor oil. Probably the most old school of old school worm colors, if you can think of one. So that was the first fish that I sort of sight casted. I, I saw her sitting up there sort of snuck around, threw up, first cast, uh, she smoked the worm, so that was awesome. So in addition to my jelly worm that I just retied, we'll do a little bit of a gear check here. So uh, this is actually a newer combo for me. This rod itself, this is an Olympia, I think, yep. It is a six and a half foot, two piece, a 2065. This has gotta be like a light action rod. Uh, it has got the nice old school <laughs> metal rod guides. And then the reel is a new reel. My buddy Todd um, over at the Tackle Box on Facebook sent me this reel. So this is a Daiwa AG1300. I sport it up with some hybrid like mono fluoro kind of line-ish thing. Um, and that is it. Perfect combo for scooting around the bank. Before I gotta get up to Abilene, let's get a few more. Ah, oh, that was awesome. I just got eyes on another bass that's just sitting right up here. 
Let's see if we can duplicate the magic of that first fish. That was awesome. So I guess these fish are maybe hanging out pre-spawn. It's kind of weird. They're definitely hunkered down. Looks like on sort of any little bit of pea gravel that you can find. Let's do it. Oh. What is up, Bass and Buds? So, all right, we just made one more stop on our way up to Abilene. We are in Brownwood, Texas. Um, there's a little river that goes through Brownwood. I'm not sure what the name of it is. We are just downtown. And I'm going to see if we can get a fish or two. This is a really weird area. There's some water up high, and then it's like a giant drop-off behind me. Um, it's late in the day, and the sun's getting low, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> This is pretty sketch. <laughs> so I had to climb down this embankment to get down here, which uh, kind of glad I didn't have my build and shoes on with me today. Those things are like grease lightning going down these hills. So there is a little bit of life. So we are below the dam right now. There's a dam just up that away. It's actually a pretty serious looking dam, to be honest with you. And I saw a bunch of flickers of bait and things down here, so we'll see. As y'all can tell, we don't have a ton of daylight. I'm still about an hour outside of Abilene, and I gotta get a hotel tonight. So it's gonna be, you know. But I drove over this, I could see it from the highway. It actually looks really good down here, so we'll see what happens. Could be a bass in here. Could also be a snake. <laughs> I am not that brave. <laughs> I think one bad hook set and I'd be tumbling down. Oh my gosh. Well, that's about it for Brownwood. On to Abilene. We didn't do like too crazy well uh, fishing on the road, um, but I did explore a couple of waters that I've never fished before. We got one really nice bass on that Tom Man jelly worm in old school motor oil, so that was pretty fun. But I'm head back to the old Retro Ranch and I passed this place. This is called Waymore's Bait and Tackle in Marble Falls, Texas. I've actually driven by this a number of times. I've never been in. So I just stopped in real quick, uh, met the owner, Chris, and man, this is gonna be a fun little stop. So it's mostly a, a bait shop, i.e. live bait, but they do have some pretty cool local baits that I wanted to show you guys. Okay, so check this out all back there these are all bait tanks okay so we're checking out the shop here uh this is pretty cool so here we are inside of way more bait and tackle um this is a tack shop that services uh lake travis buchanan lbj lake marble falls probably even lake austin um there's not a ton of baits in here but i found a wall of some really cool local baits that oh man um again if it ain't old school at least it's gonna be local okay so first off we've got a wall of these baits so these are called forage baits check out the back so it is uh brian washburn is the owner designer and i will drop the contact information below so that looks like a texas area code number so he is uh clearly a local dude of some sort Man, these are actually some really good looking baits. Check out the sunfish color on that one, or, or clown. So that looks sort of like a uh, like version of a Lucky Craft RC uh, bait. 
check out that crawfish color. Oof! Holy smokes. That is a Texas springtime killer. And you all know this thing caught my eye. Look at that. That looks like a version of a storm wiggle wart. Uh, and I bet that thing smokes it. So I was talking to Chris and he said this, um, one of the lakes that we fish here on Retro Bass in is Bass Drop. He actually said this bait is killer on that lake. Bass Drop's a neat little lake. It's got some, uh, a lot of grass and some smaller bait fish. So that makes a ton of sense. But anyway, check out this wall of forage baits. Those are awesome. Of course, you got the classic H&H &H baits here. The old single spinner and double spinner. We're next time we're at Louisiana. I think we're gonna do an H and H episode. I gotta get out there and, and go see those guys. Some Bill Lewis rattle traps. Nice Texas red color. So what are these things? Let me get one with a sticker in a, in a good spot. Cool Baits Lure Company. The Down Under. So that looks like an underspin of some sort with a ah, really nice offset worm hook on it. Huh. Check out the back of this thing. Uh, cool Baits Lure Company. I don't know, they got a website. Uh, yep, www.coolbaits. Uh, so I'll drop a link to this thing in the description as well. Check out those though, those look pretty sweet. That would actually be really nice on, on Travis. Fishing some deep water ledges and such. And looks like we've got some more jigging spoons here. Maltese Minnow. Little River Products. Yeah, I don't know that company either. Early Texas, okay, cool. Uh, these baits have been used for years to catch a variety of fish like sand bass, white bass, stripers, hybrids, and black bass. Uh, check them out at www.bishop-distributed.com. Cool. I'll drop those down below. That's awesome. By the way, sorry for the noise. Uh, we are right by a major highway, so it's been pretty loud. So I mentioned bait seam number one here, and they've got a ton of awesome looking live bait. I think they distribute to a lot of the shops around here. Um, but all of these guys <laughs> are different baits. Minnows, perch, all kinds of good stuff. Man, that was really cool and totally worth a stop. Just talking to Chris, who is the new owner of Way More Bait and Tackle. It's the truck from here, I'm, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, I was talking to Chris, who is the owner of Way More Bait and Tackle. Him and his cousin bought this. I think this has been here since like the 50s or 60s, uh, but, Definitely a spot to check out if you guys are ever in Marble Falls, Texas. Well, I hope that y'all enjoyed this little detour in our retro bass and road trip. Until next time, shop local and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bass.